Psalm, the longest chapter in the book, 119. And we're going to do every verse, but not tonight. It would be foolish to do this chapter in one night. We're going to break it down. We're going to do 16 verses every night, the Lord tarries. How's that? Can't say we've gone through the Bible if we don't go through the Bible every verse. Bless it. She. That seems to be a reoccurring theme in the in the book of Psalms. Bless it. Happy. Are the undefiled. Man, there are many defiled Christians and churches and people. But they're not happy in the way, the way of life. Jesus says, I'm the way. Now, Psalms 119, I forgot to read, is divided by the Jewish alphabet. And we got, if some Bibles don't have it, if you got the, the funny looking uh, character in Allah, that's the Hebrew alphabet. I'll try to pronounce the Hebrew alphabet as best as I can. But that's Allah. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, this was church doctrine. Galatians will refute what we just read. It's not church doctrine. It's written even before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's written before Paul. It's written even before the birth of Jesus Christ. Psalms is to Israel. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the law, the commandments, the judgments, the, the precepts of the law. But where we can, we will put application. We will spiritualize for the church. And growing Christian, but doctrinally, it's to the nation of Israel. Historically, it's to the nation of Israel. But there are some applications we can do for spiritual to us and growing. Blessed are they that keep his testimony. What God's done for the nation of Israel, all his signs and wonders, and that seek him. With the whole heart. And Paul says in Romans chapter 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Part of law was to love the Lord with your, all your heart. All your mind. And all your soul. We're to give God our whole heart. And when we give God our whole heart. We're blessed. We're happy. Listen I'm happy in the Lord. I'm, I'm just missing comfort and, and love, but I, I'm happy in the Lord. I try to give God my whole heart. I try to give God my best. And they also do no iniquity. John says over there, sin not. And if we sin, we got an advocate. We can apply the scriptures over to the church age, and we're going to find that in Psalms 119. I'm going to do the best of the ability. And if it seems so much, maybe we'll go down to eight verses, but we'll try 16 verses a night. Because all the words, by every word of the, of, of the word of God, that's what Jesus quoted to the devil. They walk in his ways. If you do iniquity, you are not walking in God's way. You cannot march down the street being a sodomite and say God loves us when the Bible says sodomy is an abomination. I don't care what you say. I don't care what your church says. What the Bible says. Thou, God, has commanded us to keep the precepts diligently that's a command or order and that's to the law 
Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Their command. And diligently, you're to keep, you know, you're to live your life with the law, walking on eggshells without cracking the egg. One slip. You didn't have the eternal security. You didn't have the indwelling Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statute. Oh, if, if what I'm going to do, where I am going, would be to God's statutes. Again, that's, all, that's an Old Testament term. Statute. Law. When you go to a law court or you go to a law cottage, they're going to teach you statutes. That's a law term. Then shall I not be ashamed? <clears throat> All that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes, then I shall not be ashamed. When I walk away from what the law says to do, the writer of the psalm, the psalm is saying, then, I, you know, I'm ashamed. Can you recognize that verse with a New Testament verse? That many Christians don't do? What verse would match that word? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Many Christians are going to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ. I thought it was good. I thought God approved of it. What did the Bible say? The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. It didn't say, give them crap. They had to be entertained. It's not what it says. So, we'll move on. You'll be ashamed when the wood, hay, or stubble leaves ashes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto thy commandments. Those are, and there's more than ten commandments. And what was a Jew to be under the law? To obey the commandments? Absolutely. No. He says respect. With honor. As, you know, one of the commandments is to honor a mother and father. That means respect. That means obey. That means listen to. That means give, a, give an inheritance to. Give the proper place. David did it when it came to uh, thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not commit murder. He did not give the place of the law. And thanks be to God's mercy and grace. The sure mercies of David. I will praise thee with the uprightness of my heart. I'm going to praise thee with, with my head. No, that's not it. And like I said, even with the Jewish law, you know, all thy heart. Is first all thy mind is second and all thy soul uprightness of heart means we already read the, the whole heart verse 2 uprightness of heart what's that mean well I'm gonna give God my sin wicked vile heart absolutely correctly not you got to give God a clean heart that's what uprightness means pick up the, the up what do you got you got rightness what's the up Heaven, God, holy. You got to praise God the correct way. Well, I'm going to praise God doing the world. That's where I told you, you failed. Jesus said, marvel not, uh, know that the world hated me. John says, marvel not, the world hates you. And when you got a worldly heart in a worldly way, you are not giving God an uprightness of heart. You're giving him a worldly heart, which does not go with uprightness. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve man. And you can't do both. You can't serve God with a lukewarm heart because God's going to say, Bleh. Isn't it amazing that in our church age, the land is in church, God says, and God, holy God. Now, when he's sending the prophets, go to Bethel and, and transgress. I mean, that's sarcasm. God doesn't want you to transgress. But when he writes to our church, hey, I'd rather you be cold. First, he said, I'd rather you be on fire. I'd rather you be hot. 
But I'd rather you be cold. Because lukewarm, I'm going to spew the other mind. God says, listen. And anybody in the church says, God says, let's just be cold. That's remarkable that God says that to our church. You know, you're going to be cold, just be cold. Why would God say that? Because I told you, there's wood, hair, and stubble. I told you, judgment seat of Christ. If you don't care, if you're saved, that's it. Fine. You, you lose out. You've been warned. But when you've been warned about the judgment, you've been warned what the Bible said, and then you've been warned what the world does, and you've been warned about that marriage of the world and the, and the, the Christian faith together, and God says, you make me sick, and you're going to get more hay or stubble. And it's remarkable how many Christian churches have adapted into the world to do the worldly means. Friend, you're going to end up lost at the judgment seat of Christ. I didn't say your soul. I mean, you're going to have wood, hair, or stubble. And you know what's going to happen to a lot of people that you converted? Many of them are going to go off into hell thinking they're saved. And I have dealt with many people who I've dealt with them about their soul. Well, I've said this prayer. That's no further can I get after that. Uh, I am, when it comes to salvation, I am not going to have you say any prayer to God unless I'm sure you know exactly what you're doing. They say salvation is simple, yeah, but you got to know where you're going, hell. You got to know that you're a sinner. I rather just plant the seed and let somebody else water. Upright is a heart. You can't have any world. When I shall have learned thy righteous. Get that word of upright to righteous judgment. What's the righteous judgment? You're going to get evil if you sin. Evil is a consequence of sin. These children today are acting up and rioting and looting because you went against the Bible and said, well, we don't need to discipline them anymore. You know, the government says, and, and this man said, the psychology said, we're to love them, put them in a the corner and count to five, and we're not to spank them and all that. And then this is what, this is a judgment of God. The Bible says, chastise them. You don't want to do that? All right, now you got yourself a nation of unrowdy, a nation of rowdy children. Deal with it. Come on, deal with it. Resurrect Dr. Spock and have him take care of it. It ain't going to happen. And it's only going to get worse because these children today are going to have children and they're going to raise their children worse if the Lord tarry. Righteous judgment. What are righteous judgment? The book of Judges had, had, had judgment. Oh, you want to sin? Okay. Moab, come here. Go get him. Then they repented, it got right, the judge died. They, you want to sin again? Really? Philistines, come here. They won't listen to me. They won't, they won't adhere to what I told them to do. They won't listen to what Moses told them to do. Uh, the judgment is, go ahead, afflict them. And then when Jeremiah came along, they would not do the law. They would not listen to Jeremiah. And the judgment was, Babylon, come here. Yeah, you, come here. Go get him. You know what the worst judgment is for the nation of Israel? The Antichrist coming. Jacob's trouble. The tribulation period is a judgment of God because they will not do what God told them to do. I will keep thy statutes. See, I will keep them. Forsake me not utterly. God, my intention is I want to do right and what you told me to do, I'm going to do it. Lord, don't forsake me. Why is he worried about being forsaken? Because for the Old Testament saint, the Holy Spirit could leave. Look at Samson. Boom, he's got the Holy Spirit. Boom, he loses the Holy Spirit. Boom, he gets the Holy Spirit. Boom, he loses the Holy Spirit. Boom, he, and when David sinned his great sin, he says, Lord, please take not thy Holy Spirit. 
Now, I'm a born-again Bible-believing Christian, and I got the date mixed up. It was April 26th, not April 20, 21st, but April 26th, 1987, I received Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now, if I went out, by chance, I won't do it, but if I went out and got myself a weapon, and I killed a whole bunch of people on a bus. In the Old Testament, that would, you, you, you're to die and you go to hell. In the Old Testament. Outside of David. New Testament. Oh, by the way, you would lose the Holy Spirit, too. New Testament. I got the Holy Spirit indwelling in me. I've committed a murder. The government's supposed to cap and punish me. I still am absent from the body and present with the Lord. I don't lose the Holy Spirit. I don't, I don't lose the relationship I have with God because God has adopted me. That's not so in the, in the Old Testament. A lot of times you don't know. Listen, that Day of Atonement was once a year. What'd you do a week after the Day of Atonement? What was their salvation? Ew. Questionable. Questionable. Next one, Beth. Beth. Beth means house. Bethel, house of God. El is Jehovah, house of God. Beth. That's the second letter. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to word. All right, what would be the word for a man to cleanse his way in the Old Testament? Bring a sheep, bring an ox, tie the cops. It was a goat. <laughs> You got to be three times a year. You got to go to Jerusalem. Can't have any marks. You, you got to cut your hair properly. You can't wear that. I mean, just keep on going. Make sure you put a battlement around your house when you get a house. Honor your parent. What would be the command for the church today? The church age. Yes, take heed according to the word. Both testament. What's the word today? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Teach others, exhort others. Pray without season, rejoice evermore. Would be First would be the salvation of Jesus Christ. And then there would be work, not for salvation, but just to be a proper fellow, a purpose proper son of God. The Old Testament young man would have to do it because of work. With my whole heart. Got that again. Have I sought thee? Well, God, I want to serve you and I want to serve the world. It does not work. You cannot serve God. You cannot serve man. Well, you know, we're going to have our ministry. We're going to have it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we're going to have a beer party. You see, that's impossible. I've been in churches. I've been in churches where we're going to dress up like clowns. In the name of Jesus. That's not a whole heart. It's not what the Bible says. Verse 9. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Let me not walk away. Now, the commandments for a Christian are not for salvation. But if you want to have a rectable character and you don't want to cause a stir with the news media, thou shalt not commit adultery is very responsible for a Christian because I have been in churches where the piano player ran off with... <laughs> The song leader had ran off with a, I've been in churches like that. And it has caused a sour, perfumey name of filth. That the, the song leader or the piano player or the pastor or somebody. It would be 
proper and respectful for a Christian to honor his parents. It'd be proper and respectful for a Christian not to covet. But that's not going to save us. And if we violate the commandments as a Christian, we don't go to hell. We get wood, hair, and stubble. Thy word have I hid in my heart, kept safe, protected, memorized, that I might not sin against thee. That is definitely a verse you can settle today. You got a problem with sin? Get a concordance, look up every place in the Bible where that sin is and memorize those verses. Be awfully hard to commit that sin when you got the scripture. That'd be for the Old Testament and for the church age. That's a proper verse. Again, it's too bad that many Christians don't put the word in their heart. They can tell you how many players are on a ball team, but they can't tell you who the 12 disciples are. They can tell you all the stats of an actor or actress, but they can't tell you where Jesus was born. Blessed, there's that happy. Art thou God? We can make God happy. O Lord, teach me thy statue. Wouldn't it have been the priest? How about this? Wouldn't it be the pastor of the church that teaches the statues? My Sunday school teacher? Well, no. How about the Holy Spirit teaching? And the men being used by the Holy Spirit, is that not what the definition and inspiration is? Yeah, God can use a pastor, but what spirit is that pastor? He can be the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. He could be the spirit of the devil. Or he could be his own spirit. And let me explain myself. If a preacher is of God's spirit, he wants people to do right. He wants himself to do right. He wants them to learn by the word of God. And he doesn't want to do anything but what the word of God says. If he's got the devilish spirit, he's going to go against the Bible, he's going to go with the world, he's going to go with the flesh. <clears throat> he's going to go after that which was devilish and that which is not holy. Well, what about a man that, that's after the flesh? He's going to get in that pulpit so he can fill his pocketbook with, with money. He's going into ministry so he can make a paycheck. And he's probably one of those ones, well, I'm only going to have a Sunday morning. That's it, Sunday morning. And if you want me to come to, you, to your church or you want me, you got to pay me. You got to put me in an expensive hotel. And you got to take care of me. And I'm not talking about an evangelist. I'm talking about a man that's in for the money. It's his name. It's all about his name. Of course, when evangelists come or visiting, yeah, you take care of him, you help him, guide him, but he's not requesting. I know and I've heard of famous men preachers and women preachers. They'll give you a list. Make sure I stay at this hotel chain. Make sure I get this food and I only drink this bottle of water. I am not busy from this hour to day. I can make any phone, you know, and they just give you a list of things. That's a higher one. The one that teaches us is the Holy Spirit. What do you do? A man that I'm following and listening to, one of my instructors, he's dead and going to glory. He's in heaven. I'm doing his old, I'm doing my old classrooms. I'm doing my old lessons from school. And I, I, I'm listening to his videos again. To learn. Is he teaching me? He's dead. We oh, we got a great famous preacher. We got the greatest preacher. That's what the Corinth Church said. What they forgot was the Holy Spirit. If that man was so good in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit was using that man. 
And we've taken the glory of the Holy Spirit and passed it on to man. And that's for Anchor today. Another thing, they lift up their churches. And I know it right now. I got a man in the church in mind. It's all about him. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. Now, what's that one for a Christian? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. If you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the judgment is you will end up in hell. If you are a Catholic and you trust the Catholic, you will go into hell. If you're a Jehovah Witness, you're trusting Jehovah Witnessism, you will go into hell. If you believe in baptism, and that's, you're going into hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's for the church age. What would it be for the Old Testament saint? Uh, buddy, you're coveting. You, 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 it's number 10, number 9, number 10. Yeah, it's a wonderful, great house you got there. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Um, the law says you have to have a battlement. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Forgot about that. I have rejoiced in the way. Now, we know who the way of God is later. Jesus Christ. Of thy testimony. The way of the Old Testament, the foolish statement. Oh, they look forward to the Calvary. You know what the way of the Old Testament is? not Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's not what the Old Testament is. You know what the way of the Old Testament is? Commandments, the law, the testimonies. The statutes. That's the way. And their way condemned him for the law shows I can't do the law. The way they have it. All right. I need to bring a lamb. I brought a goat. It's not a goat. The law said, but I, 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 it's a goat. It says a lamb. Well, I don't care where it says to go. All right, then you're doing wrong. Today, it's Jesus Christ. Well, I got religion. It's not religion. It's Jesus. I got my religion. Don't you? Do okay, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. When King Saul went in and made the offerings that were to the priest's office, he got God angry because it was not for King Saul to make the offering. I rejoice in thy way of the testimony as much as in all riches. Give me all the gold and silver. I don't want it. I want to do what God. I want to please God over riches. I will meditate. I will pray. I will think. I will spend time. What's today's verse for to meditate? Study to show thyself approved unto God. I will meditate thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. What you say to do and what you told us to do and what you have written for us, I will delight, make happy, great, wonderful life myself in thy statue. I will not forget thy word. And there is another verse. Why should I memorize scripture? I will not forget thy word. Don't forget your Bible when you go to church. It's amazing that when you go to church, how many people in the past say, okay, open up your Bible, and their people don't even have a Bible. Where's your Bible? You're going to church. Where is your Bible? I bet you if you're going to a ball game, I bet you didn't forget the ticket. So that's where we're going to stop right there, 16.